What's up you guys, it's Sir Scrub here bringing you some more Scrub Tier you go and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at my thoughts on Nibiru. What this card means for the fate of Yu-Gi-Oh, whether or not it's healthy or not, um, just kind of the impact that the Space Rock is going to have. Before I get into my spiel though, I will say that this is uh, kind of going off of a discussion my friend the Scarlet Duelist posted, so I'll have a link to his video down in the description. Go and watch his before you watch mine. Hear his thoughts about it because this is kind of a response. Not necessarily, it's not like I'm going to go point for point. We're not having a debate or anything over this. It's just he's the one that started the discussion and I want to give him his credit where it's due. But, I do want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below and like and subscribe to see more content from me. And if you do want to see this channel grow, please be sure to check out my Patreon, PayPal, and TCG Player Store, all linked in the description. With all that junk out of the way, let's go and jump both feet into today's video. So, a space rock. This card is on everyone's mind right now, and for good reason. This card absolutely changes the fabric of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh from here forward. If combo decks do not respect this card, it's a turn ender. However, is it healthy? I think yes. This card goes a long, long way in checking combo decks, which I think we all agree are only getting more powerful as Yu-Gi-Oh progresses. Now, with that being said, I believe Nibiru to simply be an evolution of power creep. However, I do not agree with Nibiru's methods. This card does in fact punish people for simply playing Yu-Gi-Oh, which I think is wrong. You should be able to play the game. However, the caveat comes in, in any kind of competitive game, there has to be a certain amount of unfair. And that's where the combo decks come, come into play. They combo out, they put out two, three, four, five negates, and if you're going second, unless you have the out cards, there's really nothing you can do, because if you're playing another combo deck that's just all gas, you're never going to get your plays off the ground. And that's how they become unfair, to where it's essentially an FTK. Whereas something like Nibiru is unfair in the fact that you're just doing what your deck does, and Nibiru butt fucks you for it. But, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that, yes, it's unfair. Yes, this card is immensely powerful, but it definitely has its weaknesses. And it's the fact that it's just part of the game. Um, it's just how it is. Uh, so with the weaknesses of this card, it's the fact that you can't draw it for your sixth card. It has to be in your opening five like a hand trap, or you have to hope your opponent pitches a Mothman or something like that allows you to draw cards. But either which way, you have to see it in your opening hand, not for your top deck going second. Whereas something like Spear Mode, it doesn't matter how you draw into it, you still get to wreck the Spear Mode. Um, I do think that this is not the best Mega 10 promo. I think it's the most hype Mega 10 promo because it's the most flashy. However, I do think that Dark Ruler No More does a much better and much fairer job at checking combo decks than Nibiru. Don't get me wrong, both of these cards are format warping. If Nibiru had been any other card, Dark Ruler No More would be the talk of the town, and vice versa. Nibiru is the talk of the town. Hell, Dimension Shifter is a macrocosmos and a hand trap, so all, all three of these Mega Ten promos are insane. They're all game changers. But I think Dark Ruler No More is absolutely the best. Dark Ruler No More is much easier to play around or counter. You know, you gotta have your back row. If you just chain an MST, you can use Hot Red Archfiend to negate it. But um, it forces you into more creative deck building, whereas Nibiru just slows the pace of the game down. With Dark Ruler No More, you can still play those combo decks, but now it's forcing you to take some gas away and put in some back row just to be able to respect this card because your monsters can't respond to it. Whereas if you don't play around the idea that they maybe have, your, have Nibiru, it's going to wreck you. If they haven't, if you don't respect these cards, they're going to end your day. And I think not Dark Ruler No More is the much more balanced card. Yes, it can't be responded to by monster effects. Yes, it's a normal it's a normal spell quick uh, skill drain. Excuse me. But with as much powerful back row cards that we have, Solemn Judgment's at three, folks. <laughs> and it's the fact that your monsters can't respond directly to it. There's, It's much easier to play around, whereas Nibiru says, hey, if you don't have an answer for me right now, you lose. So I think that um, 
that's the discussion we really need to be having is yes nibiru is unfair yes it does punish you for simply playing the game of Yu Gi Oh. but we have to understand that this is the simple evolution of power creep we went from kai spirit we've got spear mode kaijus lava golem volcanic queen we knew we all knew in the back of our minds that one day something like nibiru was going to happen um so at this point it's just kind of like all right, it's here, so what do we do about it? So what do you do about Nibiru? Um, I've heard a lot of people talking about, like, exchange in the side deck just to rip it out of their hands, which is actually kind of quirky considering you can rip other hand traps out or other combo pieces, whatever. Uh, say you're going against a Sky Striker player and you snatch the engage out of their hand, but the caveat becomes, well, they, didn't, they get to take a card out of your hand. So you do have to play around it. Um, there's Prohibition, which is a do-nothing card. It doesn't impact card economy whatsoever. But I think it is... A very impactful and unique floodgate. Just being able to activate it and say, no, Dibiru, it's not happening. I'm not going to worry about that this turn. Is a pretty good pretty good way of protecting yourself from it, but it does require you to play a dead card. It's one of those things, if you don't play something to stop Nibiru, you're going to die. Um, whereas if you put something like... Um, a Vanity's Fiend, or just something that prevents the opponent from special summoning. Uh, a lot of people have been using Nightmare Corruptor Ibley, using her uh, with, like, the Orcist engine, because, you know, normal summon her, Link into Mermaid, she gives herself to the opponent, the opponent can't special summon, so they can't Nibiru you. So there, that is another way you could play around Nibiru. There's just all sorts of ways to play around it, and I think it's, um... I'm actually very happy that these cards are here, because they're both of these cards are requiring more creative deck building choices. It's requiring, it made the game, it added another level of complexity to the game. And I think that's exactly what we needed. Not in terms of like a new mechanic or anything like that, but it just, it's one of those, it created a new caveat of, do they have the Dark Ruler no more? Do they have the Nibiru? And these are things that you now have to respect and think about. Um, one more time, I just want to shout out my good buddy, the Scarlet Duelist sharing his thoughts in this video before I could get around to it. This is kind of a semi response. We do have we do have slightly different opinions on this card. So <laughs> um, be sure to check out his channel. Link is in the description. And if you do want to see more content from me, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you do want to see my channel grow and prosper, please be sure to check out my Patreon, PayPal, and TCG player store all in the description. But with all that being said, most importantly, don't forget, be a scrub. Peace.